Hi, welcome to episode nine of the Just One End podcast. My name is Elizabeth Zimmerman, but you can call me Liz. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Algebrina. Um, and we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast called the Just One End podcast group. Um, it is Wednesday, September 6th, and I am coming to you from Cochranville, Pennsylvania, where I live with my husband, Greg, our two children, Eric and Tilda, and our dog, Millie. Um, so today, I want to start out by saying thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I want to start out by saying thank you to everyone um, who has watched, who has subscribed, who has left comments, who has reached out to me, um, either Instagram or any way that, that we've interacted. Um, it has been so much fun to um, start this podcast. I really had no idea what was what it was going to turn into, what it was going to lead to. Um, so the fact that we have hit 100 subscribers as of last week <laughs> is very exciting. Um, so like I said, thank you, thank you to, to everyone um, who, who's contributed to that. Um, so as I mentioned last week, um, hitting the 100 subscribers, I am doing a 100 subscriber giveaway. Um, I've already announced it on um, Instagram. I already opened up the feed in Ravel the uh, thread. I've already opened up the thread in Ravelry. Um, so some people have already joined. Um, but obviously I need to announce it on <laughs> the podcast itself. So um, I am giving away two 50 gram skeins of um, Shelter by Brooklyn Tweed. So here's both of them. Um, this is the Thistle colorway. It's probably not going to show up very well because there is terrible lighting today. Um, it is purple. Uh, it looks a bit maroon. Like it, purple always does with my camera. <laughs> Um, but this is a thistle colorway. I highly recommend going to the um, Brooklyn Tweed website to check out what color it actually looks like. Um, they obviously photograph their colors a lot more true uh, than I would be able to show you. So um, this is worsted weight. Like I said, it's two um, 50 gram skeins. And um, yeah, so, oh, and it's 100% uh, wool. So this is um, up for grabs. Um, there is a prompt in the giveaway thread in Ravelry. Um, it is who is the most knitworthy person in your life. So hop over to Ravelry, join the group, um, put your answer in the thread, and then I'm going to leave that open until next Friday, um, which would be the 15th of September. Um, and then I'm going to plan on closing it probably around midnight. I don't know exactly when. And then I'll record an episode next weekend um, and announce the winner. So that is how that will go. Um, also in the past week, I was able to coordinate with a maker who has offered to send me something to use as a giveaway prize. Um, I don't have it yet, so I won't get into the details at this moment, but that has prompted me to think about um, starting my own um, knit along. So I would... Love to start hosting uh, knit alongs. Um, I'd like to do the first one probably starting in October, uh, maybe go for six weeks, maybe through the end of November. Um, but I would love to hear your suggestions. What would you like to do as a knit along um, for our very first one as a podcast group? <laughs> so um, I'm not sure if it should be a specific pattern or a specific um, style or, you know, maybe something just for a season, like something fall related or winter related. Um, so let me hear your suggestions. Um, comment below or um, send me a message or maybe I'll open up a thread in Ravelry um, and then we can uh, get the ball rolling there. So it's lots of exciting stuff. Um, again, like I said, thank you to everyone. Um, it's making me feel like a real podcaster, <laughs> which, which is very exciting. So um, yeah, so thank you. Um, so I'm going to start off today with a segment that I usually don't do. Um, I'm going to do a segment on what I'm drinking today. So what I'm drinking today is Twining's Chai Pumpkin Spice Black Tea. Um, this is really super delicious. Um, it's obviously a K-cup. I like my Keurig. Um, I am more of a tea drinker than a coffee drinker. I like both, but um, tea is my preference. And of teas, black tea is what I prefer. 
Um, so this is really good. Um, like I said, the lighting is bad today because it is rainy and dreary and just kind of gross outside, <laughs> but it is the um, beginning of feeling like fall. Um, I know that fall doesn't actually start until September 22nd, and I have friends who are, um, you know, missing summer already and making sure that those of us who are excited about fall keep it, you know, toned down a bit <laughs> until the end of September. Um, uh, but I love pumpkin flavored things, so I'm excited for all the pumpkin stuff coming out. Um, and I decided I'm going to start drinking some tea. So, um... The reasons I wanted to show you though, the, the drinking section is, um, first of all, it's fall. Uh, second of all, what I'm drinking my beverage out of is a new mug that I acquired. Um, I picked this up at Flying Fibers last weekend. So you can see their logo. And then on the back, it's really full, so I'm trying not to spill. <laughs> on the back is, um, it counts from one to 10 in Welsh. I hope that's right. Um, so it's a, it's a fun mug that I picked up. And lastly, um, I don't have a finished object for you today. So I decided to pull one from the vault, so to speak. Um, and I'm using it now with my beverage. So <laughs> I have here a coaster that I made. Um, this is obviously crochet. Um, well, maybe not obviously. This is crochet. Um, I made it out of bamboo pop in the lime green colorway. It may be dirty, sorry. We do use them, so. Um, the cool thing about this coaster, I think it's called a citrus coaster. Um, I have the pattern on my Ravelry page, so I'll link to that. Um, but the cool thing about this one is the edge. So hopefully you can see that. Um, this has what's called the crab stitch around the edge. Um, it's not something I'd ever done before, so it was a new technique that I got to learn for this pattern, um, and I really liked it. Also, the pattern itself, um, which is free, I don't remember if I mentioned that, um, the pattern links to a video tutorial on how to do the crab stitch. So it's um, it was really cool. So I do have, I think I have two. I think I made a set of two. I intended to make a set of four, um, but I just didn't get around to making the other two. So maybe someday um, I'll do that. So, um, but that's it for finished objects. So I don't have anything new that's finished. Um, so that, that's why I pulled that one, pulled that one out. Um, works in progress though. I do have a couple. So, uh, you remember last week I was working on a sock for my son. Um, I'm using the Sprout. Um, I'm using Sprout in a tweed base from Beautiful Mess Yarnworks. Um, and, um, I didn't like how it was fitting. Um, I did get a couple of comments from people suggesting uh, to do a ribbed sock, um, which will be better for him to grow into. Um, so I like that suggestion. So I did go ahead and rip out that sock and I, I've restarted with the rib sock. So obviously I have not made it very far. <laughs> I have like not even an inch um, of ribbing so far. And I've cast this on using um, nine inch circulars and I gotta admit, I don't like them. Um, maybe it's just because I'm doing ribbing and as a continental knitter, knitter ribbing's a bit fiddly anyway. Um, so you add in tiny needles and I'm just, I'm not enjoying it at all. So very soon I'm just gonna switch this over to, uh, to Magic Loop. That's, I think that's really my preferred um, method of doing socks. I don't mind uh, double pointed needles uh, but nine inch circulars aren't for me. So, um, I am keeping this project in my drawstring bag from Steel City Stitcher. Look at the lovely foxes. Right, the lining. So, um, so that's one whip. Unfortunately, there was more progress before I ripped it out. So I kind of feel like I'm starting over again, but oh well, what are you going to do? Um, my next whip is for me. So this one is in my freckled whimsy bag. This is my sock nanny. Oops, peeking out. Um, <laughs> with the uh, hippo print. And I am working on a pair of jelly rolls for me. So jelly roll socks. Um, it's by the same maker who does the, or the same pattern designer as, um, the Rose City Rollers, which is orange knits. 
Um, I am just on the heel flap. You can see that as far as I've gotten. Um, it's a two color sock. So the two colors that I'm using, and I'll just show you the balls. Um, the pink, which is the accent color, is a mini that I got from Mothy and the Squid. Come on. And then the main color is um, a Violet Beauregard that I got from Beautiful Mess Yarnworks um, from the, her Charlie and the Chocolate Factory collection. So the pink that is in this Violet Beauregard color um, matches this almost exactly. They go so well together. Like sometimes I, I'm doing the heel um, holding two, thread, two strands at once and sometimes the pink shows up in the um, Violet Beauregard and I can't tell the difference between <laughs> the two strands when, when the pink is, is there. So it is very, very, very well matched. I'm very excited about um, being able to use these two together. So that is a pair of socks for me. Um, and then I also have a weaving um, whip. I, I did the, I, I want to say cast on, but it's not casting on. <laughs> I did the warp for, um, well, it was supposed to be for a dish towel, but it hasn't really turned out to be a dish towel. It's more of like a placemat kind of texture. Um, I'm not thrilled with it. I got a worsted cotton yarn just from Walmart. Um, and it's, it's just really thick and makes the weave very gappy. Um, so I'll probably finish it. I'm not sure that I'll do more. I'll just make one placemat. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep looking around for other things, um, to work on though. I mean, it looks nice. I, I decided to do a checkerboard. Um, I'll put a picture in so you can see it. Uh, I'm not going to lift up my loom every time because <laughs> it's a bit bulky. Um, but I, I'm still on the lookout for, for weaving projects that, that I like more. So. Um, but my last whip and what I've been spending the majority of my time working on, um, is the poncho. Um, so if you remember last week, I'm working on a poncho that I, um, am making it as part of a craft swap. If you want to hear the information on it, you can check out last episode, but, um, I had finished the hood last time and this time, um, I've made really good progress on the body. So this is what it's looking like now. Um, I'm doing a twisted cable in five sections, well, five cables, and then um, purl sections in between them. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Wanderlust Hues, um, and she does have an Etsy shop. I believe it's called That Pink Door. Um, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, I am running out of yarn, though. So I have made progress through most of the body. I've probably got another maybe two or three inches that I'm going to put on the bottom um, and then do the ribbing. And then I still have the ears to do to attach to the hood. And then I have to actually attach the body to the hood too. Um, so this is all the yarn that I have left and that is not going to be enough. So, um, so I did contact the seller and I ordered a skein and then I sent her an email to say, Hey, in case you have it, here's the lot number of <laughs> the yarn that I've already ordered and used um, for the project I'm working on. So she emailed back and said that she doesn't actually have any more of that lot, but she does have the solution mixed up of what she dyed it with. Um, so she's re or not re but she, she's dyeing another skein for me using the same thing. Um, and hopefully it'll be really close. So, um, so I should get that this week. Um, I am going to stop knitting on this for the moment though, because I want to be able to, um, alternate rows with what I have left, um, with the new skein, because just in case it does have a difference, I want to make that as, as subtle of a difference as possible. Um, so hopefully that'll mitigate anything I might run into. So, um, so that's it for whips. I, uh, I'm really, really itching to cast a few things on, um, I just need to get this poncho done. But when I do finish it, um, I have a couple of Quince & Co. projects. Well, projects that I've purchased Quince & Co. yarn for um, to do. So I'm going to call these needle adjacent projects, um, like Josh of the Dairyland Knits. <laughs> he calls them naps. Um, so this is um, the Lichen colorway in um, the Chickadee base. 
I'm going to use this one to make myself a worm hut. And then I've got these two in Lark. And it is, um, I think the lighter one, sorry, green tags. The lighter one is called Glacier. And the darker one is called Slate. Um, which I think is more of like a dark gray, but it's definitely got a blue, um, blue tone to it. Um, so those are going to be used in a double knit scarf for my husband. Um, I'm going to insert a picture here. I think I may have shown this before, but it's the uh, cubic st scarf and, um, it's the double knitting project that, um, it's my first one since making the, um, hot pad that you can see in one of my other videos. There's like a time lapse of me knitting it. <laughs> There's a story behind that too, but it's in the description. So, <laughs> um, but it's my, it'll be my first big double knit project. So I'm looking forward to, to working on that. My throat is dry, not dry. I'm, I'm getting hoarse. Sorry if you're hearing some roughness in my voice. I've actually recorded this once already. Um, it was a really rough recording. It took me over an hour, had a ton of edits in it. Um, and then I went to, I went to edit it and this there was no sound um i have a little external microphone that i'm now repointing at myself so if the sound changes hopefully that's because i adjusted it better um it has two plugs one you plug into the phone and one you plug into the body of the mic itself and i've forgotten to plug it into the phone before so i double checked and made sure that i remembered to plug it into the phone before i recorded um, but the connection to the body of the mic was loose and so it wasn't actually connected. So I had no sound. So, <laughs> so I've already done this entire episode once already. Um, and I, yeah, so I, I've been talking a lot. Unfortunately, I have rehearsal tonight, so I'm hopefully not going to lose my voice entirely. Um, but we'll see. Oh, and speaking of rehearsal, total tangent. Uh, but thank you to everyone who had, had kind words to say about the, um, <laughs> Orioles performance. Uh, that we did. Like I like I said last time, because I've already talked about this, um, it was a lot of fun to do. Um, I love being in the acapella group that my dad put together. Um, we have a lot of fun, um, you know, singing together and uh, practicing and socializing with each other. Uh, and it's just, yeah, I really love it. Uh, so thank you for that. Okay, so that is it for my um, whips. I do have some acquisitions. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> I love that the Naughty Nitwits call it community service because I am. I am supporting my community, either a local yarn store or an indie dyer. I'm just being supportive. So, <laughs> so, um, so first one, I, I had the day off yesterday and today. Um, I've talked about it before. I just have lots of vacation days that I need to fit in before the end of the year. And we didn't take a whole lot of vacation the first half of the year. So they're all just kind of thrown in and squished in at the end of the year. So, um, so I had the day off and I went to Ikea to get a few things. Um, the Ikea I decided to go to was in Conshohocken. And so it was an area I'd never really been to before. So I decided to look around for some local yarn stores and I found one not too far out of my way on the way home. Um, and I decided to stop in there. So, um, the store was called Slipknot. And I love their little phrase. It says, Slipknot, where knitting begins. Which is so true. You always start a cast on, well, you usually start a cast on with a Slipknot. <laughs> so, um, so they are located in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Um, it's a nice little shop. I really enjoyed um, spending time there. I got to sit and knit for a little while. And I did pick up some yarn. Um, they have um, quite a bit of Shibui yarn, um, which I've never tried before. Um, and I picked up a couple of skeins of the Dune base. Um, so this is a DK weight. It is 50% baby alpaca, 50, or sorry, 25% baby camel, and 25% silk. You can imagine how soft this is. It is so just soft, and I can imagine how drapey um, a project is going to be too. Um, so I picked up uh, one skein of this one, which is the Abyss colorway. Um, it's not really going to show up, but it really is pretty much just black. So it's black. <laughs> um, and then this colorway, I picked up three skeins. This is called Field. Um, and it's like a gray, uh, almost olive. Come on. 
Here we go. Um, it's yeah, it's on an almost olive color, kind of grayish brownish. Um, yeah. So I picked up three skeins of that. Hello. Um, and then, so that was at um, Slipknot. Um, I also went to Flying Fibers last weekend. Obviously, I picked up the the mug that you saw. Um, I also picked up, oh, I also picked up the Brooklyn Tweed um, that I'm using for the giveaway. And I got some um, roving, I guess this is. Yeah, I think this is roving. So I picked up some roving um, to use for my spinning class that's coming up in October at Knitter's Day Out. Um, so this is just uh, four ounces of superwash merino, you know, just clean white, nothing super exciting. Um, and then I also picked up two ounces of yak, um, which I love. They put their their really um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exotic. It's on my yarn yarn pyramid. Um, they put their more exotic, yeah. they put their more exotic fibers in these um, these nice organza bags, which uh, is lovely. So that's a nice dark color. Um, the class list or class supply list for this class um, really contains some pretty fancy fibers. So so I did pick this up um, in addition to the the merino. Uh, I think it was an either or, but I figured. You know, it's nice to try out different fibers anyway to see how they're going to spin, I assume. Um, <laughs> so so when I start uh, spinning anyway, I figure I'll, I'll use it even if I don't need it for the class. So so I picked that up while I was there. Um, and then I also went to um, Stitches with Style, which is my local yarn store, um, on the same same Saturday. And the owners of Stitches of Style are retiring. So they are closing their store, um, I think mid mid to late October. So so they've marked down all of their um, all their yarn. Everything that was regularly priced is now 30% off. And then you get an, adi an additional 10% off if you pay with cash. So if you're in the area, if you're local to them, um, I'd certainly recommend checking that out before they close. Um, like I said, they're retiring, so it's a happy thing for them. So. I'm happy for them. Um, I'm sad that I really have no local yarn store <laughs> still. <laughs> so, I don't know. If anybody is looking to open a yarn store, I highly recommend Parksburg, Pennsylvania. I think it's a really cute town that could definitely use a yarn store. And it's only 15 minutes away from me. So, <laughs> so if you want to, just saying. Um, so, I picked up two skeins of uh, Mano Stelt's Del... Er, mm, oh, my goodness. Manos del Uruguay, um, the Maxima, uh, I'm assuming it's the Maxima base. Um, this is the Tiger Lily colorway, which is very autumnal. Um, this is 100% uh, wool. It is super fine merino, I think. Um, yeah, extra fine merino um, in a worsted weight. So very pretty. Lots of tonal oranges. I love the word tonal. I hope I actually use it right. But <laughs> lots of great oranges and there's some brown. Um, and almost a red. So so I picked that up. Um, and then the rest of my stuff was online purchases. So um, uh, Jamie of Beautiful Mess Yarn Works put out a coupon code. <laughs> and I had been eyeing some yarn in her shop for a while um, anyway. So when she's put out the coupon code. I use that as an excuse to pick up what I've been eyeing. Um, so I picked up two things from her. I picked up a mini skein set that's called Glazed. Um, it is donut themed. So you can see there's like different um, chocolates and like frosting. And then this one is um, inspired by sprinkles. So, so that is fun. Um, and then I also picked up a kit. So she did a Netflix and chill kit. Um, with this shawl pattern, you get the pattern, um, the yarn you need to, to knit it with, and then a little TV um, progress keeper. So I picked that up. And the pattern is by um, Annie Lupton, or Lupton, of um, Boho Chic Fiber Company. So, so I picked that up. 
Um, I also, let's see, I was watching the, I think it was Two Tangled Skeins podcast, and they mentioned that Annie Pearl on um, Etsy was having a shop-wide sale. Um, so she was just clearing off her shelves and, and making some room for, um, I'm, I'm assuming more inventory. Um, <laughs> so, so I ordered a bunch of stuff from her. So there's her card. There's her card, Annie Pearl, um, handmade, yes, handmade goods. Um, so I picked up a couple things from her. First of all, I picked up um, some stitch markers. So in this little organza bag, um, nothing terribly exciting, but <laughs> some stitch markers and these and these little containers um, are gonna be super handy. Uh, you know, they're a nice hard plastic and the, the lid screws on and off. Um, so I got two sets of that. Um, I also got a little notions pouch, um, that was called put a bird on it. And I'm hoping it's a reference to Portlandia because that's a hilarious sketch. Um, but it's got a bird on it and then this nice lining. Um, uh, so I picked that up and then I also got two sets of mini skeins because I am addicted to mini skeins. <laughs> I really need to start using them though, because I mean, th th I buy them to go into my Cozy Memories blanket because I really want to, to have a, a patchwork of that. Um, but I just, I haven't focused on that project at all. Um, you may notice in the only part of my craft room that's actually set up right now, um, I did replace the trifle bowl that I was using for my mini skeins with a big jar um, because my bowl was overflowing and, and the jar has more space. So <laughs> there's more mini skeins going in there. Honestly, I think after today's purchases though, it's going to be full anyway. So I've really got to pull those out and start using them. So I picked up two mini skein sets. Um, this, they're both, um, sparkly. I don't know that I did that on purpose, but I like them both. So this one is called frosted rainbow and it is, um, rainbow colors and there's some great, um, white in each of them. So that, that gives it its frosted quality. So those are super pretty. Sorry for crinkles. Um, and then I also got Starman, which is um, darker, more like galaxy um, colors. And again, that's a sparkle base. So, um, so those will go into my giant jar. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, one of the other things that I picked up at Stitches of Style um, was a bunch of sock yarn. So that is um, up here. I think it's the top four. Um, yes. Yeah, so I picked those up as well. But um, self-striping yarn, I have lots of plans to use it, um, but I'm just building up my collection right now. <laughs> so I picked up two balls from um, Cuppy Cake Yarns, and there's her card information um i love the gobstoppers um i've never had them before so i'm excited that these came as gobstoppers so i got um box of crayons this one here and both my son and daughter have already said that they want socks out of these um so <laughs> i'm planning to make them both socks fortunately since they have little feet i should be able to get uh, them both a pair of socks out of that um, and then I also got um, Mike Wazowski, which is obviously a Monster Ink reference. And it looks like um, it's the colors of Mike and his eyeball. So it's the green that he is um, and then black and white. So those are super fun. I'm really looking forward to um, doing something with those. And speaking of self-striping yarn, um, I am super excited about this acquisition. So I managed to snag a skein from Coloring Book Yarns. And there is her card. Come on. There we go. And there's her card. Um, this card <laughs> also has the Kitchener stitch on it, which I love. I love any place that'll like put these onto things. I was looking for a keychain for one that had this on it for a long time. Um, I don't know why I could have never find it. I think I just have terrible search terms. And from what I understand, Etsy's search engine is pretty terrible too. But um, I have wanted to, to get my hands on this kind of card uh, for a while. So I do have a Kitchener button um, that I keep on my knitting bag. Um, but something like this I can throw into a project bag too. So 
Um, I picked up the Autumn and Mint um, colorway, which is a great um, fall color. It's got black and orange and then like a pale mint green in there um, and really some gray too. So super pretty. I am so excited that I managed to get this. <laughs> Um, I signed up for her alerts using the Instagram account that she has. Um, and I caught one the same day. Like, I can't believe that that it actually happened. So, so I saw, you know, she um, did a quick update. I hopped on. I managed to grab a skein. I didn't get card decked. Um, it was very exciting. So, so I picked, uh, picked that up. Um, and then maybe it. And that was it. So, um, <laughs> so that's it for acquisitions. Um, so let me just wrap up with some podcasts or love. Um, I wrote this, some notes down because I really want to make sure that I talk about um, all the podcasters that I mean to mention and, and that I tell you why I like them. So, um, so first up is Victoria from Victoria Knits. Um, she lives in Montana with her husband. Um, they have an amazing surrounding. I mean, she, she ends her podcast typically with pictures from her back porch, um, which is just wildlife that she sees right out her window, um, which is just incredible. They like to go, um, hiking and be outdoors. Um, and I, I think I've mentioned before, she'll like go to a lake and then show you a finished object right next to the lake, <laughs> which I love that she does that. So it's a very visually appealing, um, podcast. And she's a very talented knitter. Um, she does uh, gloves and not like fingerless gloves or mittens like I would do and totally cheat, but she does fingered gloves um, in color work. Like she she has some amazing projects that she's done. So um, I highly recommend checking her out. Um, I've also started watching a fairly new podcaster uh, named Vanessa of A Historian Knits. Um, she just finished up her PhD. She has, I think, five episodes out so far. Um, her daughter, Amelia, joins her for her acquisition section, which I think is just a lot of fun. Um, she, Amelia is obviously getting more comfortable. She's starting to chime in more and, uh, and she, it, she's just excited to be there. It's really cute. So, uh, so as a story in knits, I've also been watching a spicy homemaker, uh, which I know I'm super late to the party on that one. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I started at the beginning, so I'm way back. I actually haven't done the whole watch the latest episode and go back to the beginning that I was talking about last time. Um, I may still do that, but a spicy homemaker is kind of an established one that everyone seems to like. So I'm just kind of diving in with the early ones <laughs> already. So, uh, so I'm watching that. Um, I'm also watching uh, Crafty Mama, who is Dawn up in Canada. Um, she recently started dyeing her own yarn. So she is launching her own .com. I believe it's Candy Coated Yarns. Um, I'll put the link in the bottom. Um, her yarn is still on Etsy at the moment. She's in the process of getting her, her .com set up. Um, but uh, you should definitely check out her yarn and check out her podcast. She's a lot of fun to, to listen to and and see what she's working on. Oh, speaking of dot coms, um, Amy of the Stranded podcast, um, who you already know I watch. Um, <laughs> she's one that as soon as a new episode comes out, I, I watch that one. Um, she also launched her own dot com uh, and to be supportive and, you know, test out her website and make sure everything's working fine. Um, yeah, I ordered some yarn. So, <laughs> so that should be coming pretty soon. Um, I've also been watching Lucky Jenny Knits um, with Jenny in Virginia. Um, she's not terribly close to me, but kind of local on the same general area. Um, so I, I really enjoy watching her. Um, I'm still on the early episodes, so she hasn't done too much yet. I know that she starts doing uh, knitting with friends. And actually, that's how a lot of people found out or found the podcast um, WTF Knitting with Levi because um, she had him on there. Um, the Grocery Girls actually also recently uh, mentioned him too. So he's gotten a, a much bigger following lately. But um, I actually found out about her through watching WTF Knitting. So I, I did it backwards. <laughs> but, so, but I'm loving watching Jenny. Um, and then I think the next podcast I found probably because I was following Jenny. Um, and then I think think that this podcaster was following me on Instagram and so I saw her stuff pop up 
Um, and eventually I just, I checked out her, her podcast. So it is Sasha of Sasha Knits. Um, now this young lady is the daughter of, um, yarn store owners. Um, their yarn store is Yarn Matters. Um, in Williamsburg, Virginia, I'm guessing that it's Lucky Jenny Knits' local yarn store. I don't know for sure, but they definitely have a personal connection um, with Sasha and Jenny. So, um, but this girl knows her yarn. I love it. So she, <laughs> she'll talk about the yarn that she's using. Uh, she's doing a knit along with, I'm assuming, people in the shop. Um, and she's using Malabrigo, which is certainly way better yarn than I was using like even last year or so. <laughs> um, so she, she's just been a lot of fun to watch. Um, you know, she's got pretty short podcasts, but she, I mean, she does it all. She's got Instagram. Um, she posts on Instagram a lot. She has done giveaways. She's done a tutorial on how to dye yarn with Kool-Aid, um, how to make your own stitch markers. Um, so she's just a lot of fun to check out. And I, I'd recommend, um, you know, checking out her podcast, giving her, her some love. Um, subscribe to her. Oh, also I found on her, um, on her channel, she also plays the ukulele and sings, which is just so much fun. Uh, I love a multi-talented girl. So, <laughs> um, and lastly, um, and I would say probably my favorite podcast at the moment is a uh, sweet tea, no shade with Scott and John and they're married. So <laughs> they are, um, a couple, I can't remember where they are. It's wherever Stephen B studios is, um, because Stephen B is their local yarn store, which is just amazing that that's their local yarn store. Um, but they are hilarious. I love their banter and their back and forth and they're, they're just, they're very real. Like they're, they're themselves and it's a lot of fun. Um, but John, um, Scott likes to say all the time that John hates knitting. Um, even though John is the one who taught Scott well, maybe not taught Scott how to knit, but got him into knitting. Um, Scott's mom is the one who got him into knitting podcasts and project bags and progress keepers and all of the fun stuff that, <laughs> that, that we all spend all of our time and money on. Um, but, but John um, has not, he's a product knitter. He likes to have the end product. He doesn't really love the process. Um, but lately he's been doing Portuguese knitting. Um, which I've talked about before. I love doing it for color work. Um, and if I have to do a lot of pearls, I, I prefer to Portuguese pearl. Um, so I think he's using it as his main method of knitting right now. I, I'm pretty sure he aggravated something. He hurt his hand or something. Um, so it was a, a way that he could knit without being in pain, basically. <laughs> Always a good thing. Um, so, so anyway, so I've enjoyed watching uh, watching both of them and, and watching John do the pork. Portuguese knitting. It's very cool. Yeah, so I'm all caught up on their um, their episodes. I am they're another one that I'm sure as soon as a new episode comes out, they're gonna be the first one that I watch. So really enjoying them. So those are the ones I'm watching right now. Um, I do want to mention a couple of other random things. So first of all, um, if you're in the general area and you're planning to go to the Susquehanna Valley Fiber Festival. Um, I know that, uh, Lucky Jenny Knits has mentioned that she's going, um, Aquila from a Lefty Knitter podcast. She's mentioned that she's going. Um, so if anybody else is going, let me know. I've decided I'm going to go. Um, I don't know if I'm going to convince my husband to go. <laughs> it is a bit of a drive for us. Um, uh, actually my grandma lives like 20 minutes away, so I may stop in and visit her too. Um, but we'll see, but I'm planning to go. So, um, so if you're going to be there, let me know. And, and I'd love to uh, meet up and say hi um, and check it out. This is my very first time going, so I'm not quite sure what to expect, um, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, another random thing to check on the end. Um, <laughs> my little sister is a ceramics artist. Um, so she went to school for, for ceramics. I believe she has a, um, I guess it's a BFA. She has a, a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in in ceramics um and she is considering opening an etsy shop um and i am trying to convince her that she should target knitters um <laughs> and and make knitting related things so um i'm helping her design some mug ideas um but if you have any other suggestions of things that you'd like to see um, in a ceramic shop and be it knitting related or not um, I'd love to hear them. Um, I'd love to help her get her business off the ground. 
Um, it's really cool to, you know, if you go to school for something, it's really cool to be able to utilize it. So, <laughs> so I want to help her do that as much as she can. Um, so if you have suggestions, um, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, and, and we'll see. I, I'm sure that as soon as she starts making stuff, um, I'll, I'll bring it on to show you. So I'm really excited about that. So I think that's it for this episode. Um, so just a reminder, I've asked for suggestions for the knit along. So if you want to leave a comment, um, drop in your suggestion there, uh, suggestions for my sister for ceramics. And then also, um, any feedback that you may have for me for my podcast, um, I, I'd love to hear it, um, either in the comments below, uh, maybe I'll open a thread. Um, although that's one of the questions I have is, <laughs> um, would like an ask me anything thread be, be a good thing to add to the Ravelry group? Um, or maybe should I start a podcast uh, email address that, that you could um, use to get in contact with me? So things along those lines or really anything, anything that comes to mind, feel free to leave a comment. Um, and then lastly, because I totally forgot until I said ask me anything, um, I did post a picture last week before I recorded to say, hey, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and Victoria of the Victoria and its podcast did post a question. Um, it was after I recorded that I saw it. So, um, so I decided to answer it this week. So her question was, um, would you knit the exploration station again? And, um, the short answer is probably not. Um, <laughs> I really like the pattern. I really like the finished product. Um, I'm not a huge shawl knitter, so I don't think I'm going to be the type that would knit a shawl more than once. Um, I really, because by the end you've got so many rows or so many stitches per row, I really, it just really drags for me at the end. Um, so, so I don't think that that is one that I would repeat. I do love the finished product. Um, and mine is really big. Um, I use the size six needle in a, instead of a size four. So that may be why it's so big. Um, but I don't feel like it's super wearable that I would need more than one of them. Um, <laughs> so, so I don't think I will again, but I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't knit it before. It's a great pattern. I mean, it's got some really cool elements to it. Um, I love the finished product. Um, if you've never tried brioche before there, the brioche section is very manageable. Um, it's really only, you know, like that long. It's, it's just long rows. Um, so yeah, so it's a great pattern, um, but I, th I think it's it's under my belt now, so I'll call it done. <laughs> so so thank you, Victoria, for, for asking the question. Uh, so really, I am wrapping up now. Um, the reason I'm recapping the questions is because I'll usually watch a podcast, and I'll think of, I'll, like, I'll be like, oh, they asked the question, I should respond to that, and then I'll forget by the time I finish the podcast. <laughs> so I'm repeating it for your benefit as well as mine. Uh, knit along suggestions, ceramic suggestions, any podcast feedback. Um, and if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to let me know. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time.